It doesn't work for me. Mm -mm, not so, doesn't work for me. Might work for you, might work for you, doesn't work for me. So, nope. What is up YouTube? It's your boy Zed, back at it again with another video. And I'm actually in one of my favorite places to record. I know I used to do videos a lot in here and I kind of fell off of that a little bit, but I want to get back into it only because it's easier for me to get content out to you guys while being here, because this is where I spend a lot of my morning, a lot of my free time. If I'm not in class or I'm not at work, I spend it here. I spend it driving, I spend it out and about, and I'm in my car a lot. And I've noticed that the lighting coming in from this ceiling and then the sound, it just enhances the video in such a crazy way. So I do plan on doing more videos in the car, which means I'll be able to get this content quicker out to you guys. So um, go ahead and like, go ahead and comment, go ahead and subscribe before we get into it. Um, this is another video about being a CNA. And as you can see from the description below, um, we are gonna be talking about how to make your night or day smoother as a CNA, how to have a, a smoother shift, how to have an easier shift, how to make your shift as productive and easy as possible. Um, I feel like this is gonna be a banger. I feel like this is gonna be a real banger for you guys because I did a little bit of planning for this last night. And um, I did a little bit of planning of it last night and I feel like it's going to be a banger. I get uh, questions and comments all the time about, you know, this job is taxing, this job is tiring. I'm tired, I'm, you know, always exhausted after a shift. And I feel like that is gonna happen. It's just the nature of the business. It's a busy, busy, busy time, especially right now with everywhere being short. But I will say that you can, you can simplify your shifts you can make your shifts a lot easier than they, you know, have been for you. And it takes some time to find your flow, to find your schedule, but it's definitely doable. And I feel like after hearing this video and watching this video, you'll have a little more, more a little bit more insight and can apply some of these things that I do. I have them written down. Apply some of these things that I do to make your shifts easier. So uh, without further ado, this is gonna be the intro. Y'all know the infamous intro. I'm gonna go ahead and play that now. But uh, yeah, we're about to get into it. So stick around because these are my tips. So after compiling a list of, I would say about seven tips I was able to knock out three because I feel like they kind of fell in line with the four tips that I have here. I made it simple. I kept it under five and I'm leaving it at four because this is what makes the most sense to me. Um, I feel like this is a very straightforward list. It's not too much, you know, uh, extra details that don't necessarily need to get listed, but we're going to get into it now. So my very, very first tip, my very first tip for you guys is to plan out your shift that is to plan out your day that is to plan out your night whether you're a night tech or whether you're a morning tech you have to have a form of plan before you go into work now y'all know how this industry is y'all know how shifts can go have an idea i'm not gonna say plan out 100 percent, but have an idea of what you are needing to do what are your tasks for that day what are your tasks for that night now you can have a full plan. I've done it before. I'm gonna do this at this time, this at this time. And then, you know, something crazy happens on the floor and you're like, well, that plan is shot now. It never goes to plan. Your, your plan will never go to plan. But if you have a plan, you have an idea of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Uh, I would say that goes for, as techs, as CNAs, we have, you know, certain things we need to get done. We have, uh, vitals we need to get done at certain facilities we have baths that need to be done we have uh to ambulate a patient that needs to be done and charted we have you know sometimes you have to feed a patient have an idea of who is taking longer to do certain things have an idea who can be kind of quicker today um to do certain things i feel like that'll save you a lot of time and save you a lot of just lollygagging or waiting around for you know certain things to get done and it, it also makes it easier for you to not be so stressed near the end of the shift. I know near the end of the shift for certain people, it can be kind of like a rat race to get a certain amount of things done for the morning crew. Or if you're a morning tech, a rat race to get certain things done for the night. But if you kind of do a little bit of stuff 
in a plan as you can, it'll make your night a lot easier. For example, for me. So I know that I have to get a daily weight. We can get them anywhere from, you know, midnight to like in the morning. So that's 12, anywhere from 12 uh, midnight to seven in the morning. Say I have everybody on the floor is a daily weight, right? I have to take care of at least 10 patients that night. Five, I will do closer to midnight. The other five, I would do closer to the morning. Typically, if your patients that are ambulatory and they're easy to get up, I will probably knock out those um, later, right? The ones that take the longer to, that take longer to get up, say they have a BKA, say they're uh, you know a little bit slow to do certain things, say they weigh a lot, you might need an assist. Get those done closer to like midnight because sometimes those heavier loads can take longer to do some of the smaller, minute things. Now for the morning. I would save, I would do about six at night and then four in the morning to make it easier on me. So those six would be done by midnight. The rest of the four can be done in the morning. That's my plan. That's the plan I'm sticking with. And if it goes away, that's still the plan I'm gonna try to get done. Again, anything can happen at midnight. You can get an admission, you get two admissions. That throws you off for at least two hours. But still, instead of doing it at 12, do it at two. Have an idea of how you want to do certain things. Same thing with blood sugars. We check blood sugars as, as uh, CNAs. Get a plan of how you want to get that done. I'm not gonna beat this one over your head. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to the second one. Second one is take your breaks and take your um, lunches when you can. I told you guys already, we just talked about it. He uh, shifts can get hectic all the time. But if you have a, an idea of when you wanna take your uh, lunches, and the idea of, hey, it's kind of slow right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this lunch, it will help you feel better about your shift. I know that sounds crazy, but it would. Actually, it would. Be having a stressful night and then noticing, you know, for the last hour or last 45 minutes, you know, you've been kind of like chilling because we do have moments to chill. Let's not act like we don't as techs and nurses, but you do have moments to chill unless you're on like the craziest night ever. But typically on your fully staffed nights, regular night, you do have a little bit of time to chill. So you wanna, you know, take advantage of that time. I'm taking a, hey, I'm gonna go take a 15 and go, you know, eat and drink and like use the bathroom real quick. You know what I mean? You can do that. Let your let your fellow nurses, fellow CNAs on the floor know. Another one, hey, you know, uh, it's the middle of the night, not too many things need to get done. I'm gonna go ahead and take a lunch, stuff like that. Take your lunches when you can. Uh, if your day goes away, make sure you still get your lunch in. They actually ask you at the end of the shift, hey, were you able to get your uninterrupted lunch in? That's important. Now, some nurses don't care about it. I'm one that typically don't really care, especially if, you know, the night is pretty chill at night. I think, um, like I told you guys already, at night, it is a lot slower than it is in the day. There's less things that need to be done than um, in the daytime, in the morning time, the day shift. So you can take advantage of that at any point during night. Um, as long as you get those certain skills done, typically patients are asleep. You know, I could be like, hey, you know, everybody's sleeping, going to go take a lunch real quick. And everybody's like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty dark in there. It's pretty quiet in there anyway. Go ahead and knock that out. Daytime, I don't know what to tell y'all. It gets hectic. Take your take your 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 lunches and take your breaks when you can because you never know when you're going to get another opportunity to take another one or take your first one. That's just how it is. Three would be to front load your shifts. Now, I've done this before and I don't like it. I feel like I'm running ragged. I feel like a slave on the floor. I feel like a chicken with my head cut off while I do this front loading. Now I have nurses that tell me this works out for them. I've had texts that tell me this works out for them. You have a schedule of seven to seven to get a certain amount of tasks done. You have to get daily weights, you have to get vitals, you have to get sugars, you have to get uh, uh, EKGs done, bladder scans. These are all things that you know you have to get. Outside of vitals, which is scheduled um, for different units, maybe you get it two times a shift, maybe you get it, you know, Q, Q shift, Q4, Q8, Q6. I'm not sure of the schedule that you have, but you can't schedule those. I mean, you can't really front load those because those have to be done at a certain time, but you can front load a lot. I can essentially step into work at seven, get everything done at by midnight. That means you're up from seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? That's essentially five hours of your shift. You're up running around five hours of your shift that you're running around but by noon i mean by midnight or noon depending on morning or night again 
this is applicable to morning or night by noon you'll have everything done you can focus on patient cares if i have to get a certain amount of baths done unless someone has a blowout i can you know essentially uh get that bath get essentially have all my baths done for the night and then work on patient care um which I've seen work for a few nurses. For me, it just wears me out even more because I just feel like for that five hours, like you get like no real break, no real time to sit. And it's like you're running nonstop. But then again, like you can kind of sit a little bit more near the end of the shift to kind of make sure everything is done again. You find your schedule. I've tried it all. I've been doing this for a while. I've tried it all. It doesn't work for me. Mm -mm, not so, doesn't work for me. Might work for you might work for you doesn't work for me so nope uh try that out front load just shifts if you can get everything done in the beginning and you know kind of focus on the later half the towering down of your shift for the last uh five to six hours or seven hours of your shift and then the very last tip that i have this is number four will simply be to prepare for your shift the best you can now i am a per diem uh, CNA, which means that I work every so often. I work when I can. I'm obligated to work at least one shift per week. Sometimes on some floors, which is what I was looking for, you get, you're obligated to work one shift per two weeks, which means that you're not obligated to come into work. But when I was a full-time employee where I had a set schedule of three days a week, I could not party the day before I go in. I'm a night, I've always worked nights. But if say you work mornings, you can't party the day before you go in because you're not going to be adequately adequately uh, rested before your shift. You're not going to be uh, the at the top of your game. You're not going to be ready uh, mentally for your shift, depending on what floor you're on. So I would say the biggest part of that whole getting prepared for your shift is just simply to sleep, take a nap, go to bed before you go in because um, especially nighttime because it's only going to wear you down as time goes on. I cannot work nights and not have at least a five hour nap within like maybe like 10 hours before my shift. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't run off fumes and I've done it before and it's not a good idea. It's not fun. And you're literally be like this all night, knocking out, waking up, knocking out, waking up. It's not fun. It's not fun and it's not safe. Um, I will say that, you know, if you have the support of other techs, then you can like let them know, hey, I'm having a rough night. They might be able to help you a little bit more. And I've been in that situation before, too. But simply get some rest before you go in. That's the best advice that I can tell you. If you want to pack a lunch, pack a lunch, pack a snack, get ready for your shift. That would be the best advice that I can give. Um, and these are simply the tips to make your night smoother. Also, also by preparing for your shift. I mean, like, uh, sometimes I've seen techs and nurses coming a little bit early and, you know, kind of get an idea of who the patient is. If this is night one out of, of three, you know, that first night, you won't be tired. Second night, you will be exhausted. Third night, you'll be dead to the world. But you'll be able to get those three shifts done and kind of kind of have a smoother a smoother time while doing these shifts. I feel like this is such a vital video. I'm so mad I didn't do this video beforehand. But I feel like, yo, I feel like this might be a banger. Low key, because I had to remind myself what helps me. And I feel like this does. So um, yeah, go in and like, go in and comment, go in and subscribe. What did I miss? Did I miss anything? Is there something that you do that I don't do that helps you have a smoother shift? Um, if you feel like uh, this video has helped you, go in and let me know below. I'd love to hear what you guys got to say. But that's all I got for you on this video. I'll keep this one short and sweet. We're almost at 15 minutes, so that means we got a longer video. But if you stuck with me this long, if you stuck with me this long, I rock with you. Shout out to you. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, that's all I got on this video. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Appreciate the love always. We're almost at, uh, what, are, what are we at? 2,700 subscribers. Let's go ahead and make it three. Let's make it three by the middle of March. We'll probably get there way before then, but I appreciate you guys. Sorry, got for you on this video. More content coming per week, per week, per week. All right. I appreciate you. Peace.